Lissy. I'm upstairs. Betty, is that you? This is her room. Hmm? Are you paying attention? Ruth, can you imagine? One moment you're living a perfectly happy life, and then nothing. Darkness forever and ever. Maybe there's something here that can tell us what happened to her. This is a waste of my time. We might be the only ones left to tell her story, Edward. You're just being melodramatic. I'll help you look. Draugen. Hey, the undead monster from those folk tales you read. What an odd book for a child to have. I don't know. Children love scary stories. This looks interesting. Read some of it to me, please. In Norwegian folklore, the appearance of Draugen, the reanimated corpse of a drowned mariner, heralds death. Draugen haunts the Black Seas in a shattered boat. The beast has a man's body and wears a sou'wester, but instead of a head, there is tangled seaweed, and the revenant's chilling cry freezes mortal blood to ice. Draugen has the power to enter the dreams of the living. If you wake from such a dream, you have been spared, though someone close to you... That's enough of that. It's nonsense, of course. Not something a child should be reading. Do you think Draugen took our boat? Maybe he's out there, on the fjord, waiting for nightfall so he can... Ruth was an artist. This is very primitive. Have you ever met a child, Edward? She wasn't Monet, she was eight. This must be the village church. That's Ruth and her family on one side of the aisle. Simon and his father on the other. The community divided. She found something. Where's that supposed to be? A cave. Or the... Mine. It could be. But what did she find? Something important enough to draw. That must be Ruth and Simon's fathers. Perhaps. They weren't on the best of terms. They look like they want to kill each other. To a child, maybe it looked worse than it was. Children are more insightful than you give them credit for, Teddy Bear. She made her bed that morning, before she... Or her parents did. It doesn't matter. It tells us nothing. Why are you like this today? Betty's not the only person in the world that matters. She matters the most to me. Ain't that the truth? Ruth never finished this. What does that spell? F-O-R-B... For Banelson. The curse. Who is that figure supposed to be? It's creepy. It looks a bit like the dragon in her book. A figment of her imagination. But the box she drew... It looks like this box under her desk. Really? Let me see. Pull it out. What is this? <laughs> I believe this might qualify as actual treasure. Is that Norwegian money? Sort of, but ancient. Viking coins. Are they valuable? Not in terms of monetary value, but historically. They belong in a museum. Looks like Ruth had her own private museum. Why would a child have these artifacts? She must have enjoyed collecting and playing with them. These are much too precious to play with. She should have given these to an adult. She's... She was a child 
Edward. To her, they were just shiny toys. Wait! The pin! On the doll! This is where it came from, her collection. But where did she find these treasures? If we're to believe her drawing, perhaps the mine. She may have found a gravesite. Wherever she found them, she wanted to keep them hidden. You think someone found out? These items wouldn't necessarily be worth much, except to a historian or archaeologist. What if this is how... I mean, if someone learned she'd been collecting treasures, they might be willing to do terrible things. There's a story here. The treasure box, the drawings. The overactive mind of an imaginative child. She didn't imagine the Viking artifacts. You shouldn't be so dismissive. The drawings could be her way of dealing with traumatic this events. This is what happens when I read you the principles of psychology. You get... notions. You say that like it's a bad thing. Ruth was troubled. The village was troubled, and... Is that a... bell? A church bell. Someone's here. Maybe... Betty. Why would Betty ring the church bell? Perhaps she's in trouble. I need to get to the church right now. Wait, isn't it more likely to be the person you saw the other night? We should I be careful. I told you, I'm not sure that was anything. Come on. Go ahead. I'll catch up with you before you get there. touched these since yesterday. The guard, who did uh, this? Someone who'd lost their faith. Gone fishing? God is not here. Well, of course he isn't. You won't find God in a church. God is the wind in the trees, the grass between your toes, the brook that... That's through. nature, not God. Can you peek through the forest? anyone? No, Listen! I... The bell! They're still in there! Hello? I heard the bell! Oh, this is giving me I'm here to help! Jeebies. These boards look flimsy enough to break. I think you had it in you, old fruit. Be quiet. Betty? Are you here? Hello? This is Edward Harden. Uh, I'm looking for my sister, Stop Elizabeth. Stop shouting, Edward. We're alone. There are only ghosts here. There are no ghosts. What's this rope for? The bell. This is the bell we heard ringing? I don't see any other bells. So you have to stand here and pull this rope to ring it? Yes. But there was no one here. You didn't see anyone, right? No. No one. Ghosts. I'm telling you. It's ghosts! 
So what happened to the hunchback of Grovik? They must be here still. There's only the one exit. Lissy. Look. Betty's gloves. They are definitely Betty's. Oh, she got sake. these in Boston before she left for New York. She bought them at Woolworth. I remember the day she... She's here. Where? And why would she leave her clothes lying around? It doesn't make Bread sense. Clothes. She's sending me a message. She knew I'd recognize her gloves. Her hat. She's left a trail for me to follow, like Ariadne's red thread. We're not in a lab. Betty will have left more crumbs. Betty, 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 you're turning into such a pill. What happened here? The sign on the door. God is not here. Their faith was challenged. And it didn't survive. The church book. A record of births and deaths. So we can find out what happened to the people in the village? And, uh, Elizabeth. I mean, if she was dead... Her name would be in the book. Vandals. They tore it to pieces. I don't think the missing pages left the church. Look. How many pages are missing? I counted four. They're probably all still here. I know. Let's make it a competition. One nil to team me. I wanted you to find that one. I know what a rotten loser you are. Another one. You get it. It's right here. What's that? The last sermon that was held here. What does it say? Uh, the vicar's handwriting is hard to decipher in the language. Uh, hmm. He talks about the village being divided for 20 years. This sermon was held on the anniversary of the accident this past summer. He's asking the congregation to help heal old wounds, to forgive, and move on. Something to the effect of, you sit in separate aisles in God's house. Like Ruth's drawing. I told you, she was perceptive. Tilly Verandra. Edward? Forgive each other. It addresses Johann and Frederick directly. But I wonder if they were even here. Remember the wedding picture? They were close friends once. How could they allow their grudge to escalate until... <sighs> you call each other traitors, but the only thing you've betrayed are the bonds that unite us. It sounds like Grovik was split in two, between those who stood by Johann and those who supported Frederick. Because of Ruth? The sermon is from before that. No, this is all about the preceding 20 years of division and disagreements. Here's something else. Many of you believe Grovik was cursed 20 years ago. God has not cursed you. This curse is of your own making. Ruth's drawing mentioned a curse. What do you think that means? It means they believed they were cursed and that they needed something or someone to blame for their misfortune. What are you doing? We're in a church. I thought you didn't believe in God. I do believe in civility. Just one more page missing. They considered this a sacred place. For them to destroy it. This was an act of desperation. And anger. Of 
I've never seen you read the Bible before. I've read the Bible many times. It's an important historical document. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Did you just translate that into Olden English? I happen to know the verse by heart. Hmm. You still manage to surprise me sometimes. Jesus looks sad. What reason would Jesus have to be happy? Don't be blasphemous. Given that this is all fiction, blasphemy is a contradiction. Heretic. Isn't this a fire hazard? They're not always lit. Each candle represents a single prayer. That's a lot of prayers. There were a lot of deaths. The final dinner. The Last Supper. Who taught you about the New Testament? I pick up on things. Most folks aren't heathens, like you. Two for two. A tie. Good job, Teddy. Stop, old bean. Lissy. This is not a game. Betty's out there. Of oh, horse on. feathers. Stop being so gosh darn tedious, Edward. Betty, 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 will you ever shut up about your precious Betty? This book goes back years. It lists births and deaths. Here's the third Fretland brother. The one who died in a cave-in. Someone added the word for Banelson, probably quite recently. What does that mean again? Curse. That word is all over this book. Not just the men who died in the mine, but... other deaths in the last 20 years. Ruth's drawing and the sermon both mentioned a curse. What do you think it means? I don't know. There were surprisingly few births. Perhaps they blame that on the curse as well. Look here. Ruth Elsa Fretland. She was buried in the cemetery. And the next entry, Simon Fretland. Now this is interesting. Simon is dead? Oh, that's dreadful. He drowned the day after Ruth died. Probably no coincidence. See what's scribbled next to it? Ward? Murder. Who killed it? Ruth's father? Or the mob that trashed the store? It doesn't say. After the children, a half dozen deaths in a single week. The curse. It's listed as the cause for every single death. Maybe there really was a curse. Primitive superstition. But something changed after Ruth and Simon. It might explain why there's no one around. Edward, if it killed everyone, how's that not a curse? What does that word say? Next to those names at the bottom. For... for a... Dar Traitor. Edward? What's wrong? The final entry. There's... There's no name. Alice. What if... Oh, Edward, no. Betty. It doesn't mean she's... She's not dead. She can't be. I'd know. I'd know. Teddy. I need to see the grave for myself. It's not Betty. Betty's still... Teddy? Where are you going? Don't leave me! Edward! You better not be here, Betty. This one. It's... unmarked. What are you doing? Have you gone completely mad? Edward, stop it! Not Elizabeth. I, I, I was so afraid. You're a monster. But I had to be sure. If Betty. To hell with your Betty! When did she ever shed a tear for you? Don't talk about my baby sister or like that. Or what? Or what, Edward? 
What will you do? Ignore us? Banish us? You've spent your entire life chasing them. When are you going to do something useful with what's left of it? Uh, quiet! Just leave me be. Fine. Lucy? Alice? Come back. Don't leave me alone. Please. Come back. I, I need you. I was afraid you'd left me. Now listen to me. No! Lissy. Hey! Lissy, please listen to me. I didn't mean what I said. I, I... Of course you meant it. Everything's always about Betty. Betty, Betty. I care about you both. Until it really matters. Then it's obvious who matters more. I thought she was dead. I wish she was! Don't. You deserve to be alone. Please, talk to me. What's there to talk about? You can't keep running away from me. You think you own me? That you control me? That you get to decide how I feel and what I do every minute of every day? That I'm your puppet, your little plaything? Well, fuck you, Edward Charles Harden! I never should have come here with you on this pointless chase! No. Be reasonable. What are you doing? What I should have done years ago. Maybe now you'll learn to appreciate this. Now listen to me. Please, listen. Hear me out. Don't do this. You can't do this to me. I need you. I'm not whole without you. I, I can't lose you. I... I can't live without you! Don't! 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 Please! Don't! Don't! No! 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 What? No! Oh, Alice. What have you done? Please, be all right. Please, don't... You make me sick, Edward. Your mother and father would be ashamed. Elizabeth would be ashamed. They did not think you deserved their love, so they abandoned you. Don't. Oh, my child. We are all that you have. And we love you. We are here. With us, you are never alone. Do not forget. No. Never. I never forget. I am never alone. Wake up, Edward. Stop hiding. Uh. Without us, you are nothing. You cannot hide from us. Where is Lissy? Alice is not here. Bring her back. Please. 
I need her. Alice does not love Elizabeth like you do. She loves me. Not like I do, Edward. I'm so tired. Please. What do you want? I think of you so often. You have no idea. You just want me to forgive you so that we can keep looking for your precious, perfect Betty. She needs us. <laughs> she never needed you, Teddy Bear. And she certainly doesn't need us. I can't find her on my own. Well, it's just too bad, my darling Edward. Because we're done playing second fiddle to little sis. Wait, don't go. I, I, I'm talking to... To you. Lissy. Oh. See? Please. Listen. You can't keep vanishing on me. Try me. Why are you so angry? You do not know anger, Edward. Did you ever meet my father? Alice does not want to speak with you. And what about you? Are you going to help me? God helps those who help themselves. I don't need God's help. I need Lissy. Do you, though? Did you ever? What? Of course, I... Don't go. Hear me out. Alice, I depend on you both. You can never depend on other people, Edward. I'm not sure you count as other people. Everyone leads one way or another. You don't. You can't. Is that a challenge? Stop playing games. Are you ordering me, Teddy Bear? I'm asking you. Didn't your father always tell you to stand up for yourself? To be a real man and not a sissy? Maybe that's why he put the gun to his head and pulled the trigger. Kaboom! He was so disappointed about what his only son had turned into. You're a monster. It takes one to know one, old fruit. I gave you this jacket. Betty, you were here. trying to talk to you. Lissy, I'm tired of chasing you. Alice, be reasonable. Lissy, look. Her jacket. I'm sure it wasn't here yesterday, Jesus which means Christ, Betty was Teddy. here. Perhaps when we were out yesterday. Betty, she, she Be have... Betty, 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 Betty. You love Betty more than you love us. But don't you see? What has Betty done that we haven't? What can she do that we cannot? We've always been there for you. Why do you keep looking for her? She's real. You're not. So? What? You decide what is real. We are real to you. We'll never be the same. She does not want you. Who are you talking about? Why do you think Betty left? She was sick and tired of us. She wanted to escape. Like mother. Drowning herself because she couldn't stand being around us. Like father. Ben, right in the coconut. Stop. You drive them all away, Edward. All 
into death. Not us. We're always here for you. I beg you. You are never alone. Stop! Leave me alone, both of you! You want to be alone? You really want to be alone? Fine. You're alone. Good. Lissy. Come back. Please.